we decided Ray would make something and I would finish it, and I would make something and he would finish it. Right. And immediately it was clear yeah. who should make yeah. and who <laughs> should finish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The history of us, I, I kind of date from when we moved here in a lot of ways, because we had a store and we depended on that to survive. I knew that Deb had called her business Lucky Rabbit, her jewelry business. I, I believe I actually encouraged <laughs> us to keep that name. We lived upstairs, we worked downstairs, the back was our studio, and we had one room as a shop. But we're both from Saskatchewan originally, which was kind of interesting. And we both went to the art college in Halifax. My pottery teacher gave me his phone number. Right from the beginning, there was something working. We collaborated so naturally that there almost wasn't anything to discuss. Ray liked to make the shapes. He liked to throw. He liked to make the forms and didn't know how to finish them. But what I wanted to do was embellish, make little sculptures. I'm terrible with measurements, mechanical things. Ray is great with all that. He did the chemistry, made, mixed the glazes, fired the kilns, did the photography. But I, <laughs> I enjoyed, enjoyed uh, the selling aspect of it. Both of us together produced something that neither of us could have done on our own. Yeah. Is that fair? I think that's yeah. good. See, a lot of the pressure was on Deb in terms of the business and how it operated and the collaboration of, with other artists in that space. That world became too small for Ray, can I say that? Mm -hmm. We moved out here. Ray had his own gigantic studio. Mm -hmm. And then I invited other artists to come in and it became a collective. All of that time, I was producing and selling and doing all the coordinating and um, renovating. All that came to a natural conclusion. We closed the store. 25 years was a good go and it was the right time. Everything kind of fell into place. So now we're both here, each working in our own studios, doing our own separate work. In some ways, it was a little bit hard to let that go because it becomes the unknown. What will I do by myself without that other person to, uh, to collaborate with? Between us, it really worked. And um, so now that we're on our own, Deb is having to make her own pots and I'm having to deal with my own decorative issues. There's nothing like pottery, really, like working with that wet, pliable, unstructured material. It's just this, it's all potential and it, it brings little, very little to the game other than its plasticity. Before, we had always made little honey jars or ginger jars, storage jars, and I would make little sculptures for the knobs. But now I could make a freestanding animal, so that challenged myself technically. I also bought myself a kiln because I was afraid of firing the kilns. Ray had done it for 25 years, and I'm learning mm -hmm. how to use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm learning how to dip things in glaze, and um, Ray's very supportive and very patient. I find it, it very helpful to get to get my day started in a on a on a physical and in a mental kind of level. One thing I'm so grateful is that Lauren Julian painted his mural at the end of the wharf. He put the four directions on the compass. When we do the four corners of the earth, I know which direction I'm facing. I grew up out west where uh, being an artist was, a, a, I took a, a few hard knocks for that. Here, I felt completely embraced as to be an artist. The camaraderie of other artists right away. Uh, people were interested, curious, supportive. I didn't feel um, like we sold out, you know, we, we made, we did make functional pottery, but we made it with joy. But I always felt like a real artist. 
And, and now I feel like a real artist too.